now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Pull up at the end of the street, Roger. Yes, but Martha, we haven't much time. Please, do as I say. I want to ask. Very well, anything you say. Kiss me about me. Of course, my love. Did you ever do No, me? but I want to know if you love me. Oh, you know I do, darling. You never leave me? Never, never. It, it was at this point that Martha had opened her bag and withdrew a pearl handled revolver. You promise? I promise. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> Sir Rodney Kellogg slid away from her, an expression of utter amazement on his face as he collapsed across the steering wheel, dead. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. fabric conditioner that not only softens, but actually rinses out hardness, rinses in a new kind of softness. Comfort leaves your wash refreshingly young and bouncy again. Just a little comfort in the final rinse gives a lot of comfort to your wash. in which John Steed thinks Emma Peel might be right in suggesting that top men in the ministry are being persuaded to forget their jobs in order to... Love or... In investigating a security leak at the Missile Redeployment Department, John Steed and Emma Peel had become aware of a curious atmosphere of unreality. Sir Rodney Kellogg's behavior had been extraordinary, to say the least of it. When interviewed by Steed, he appeared to answer all questions as though in a trance. Later, he'd made a particularly daring escape from the building where he was held under close arrest. No one had been able to trace him. It wasn't until the next morning that John Steed telephoned me. Steed? Steed did see to it. He and Mrs. Peel were in the mews in record time. Hmm. Nasty. Poor old Sir Rodney. This is one murder he can't accept responsibility for. No sign of the weapon. Mm -mm, not this time. Small bullet hole. Could be another pearl handled revolver. Could be. What was he doing around here? Eloping? Oh, now, Mrs. Peel, don't start all that again. Take my word for it, Steed. In a case like this, he's just. Chez La Femme. What's that? Perfume. Very, very exclusive. Ah, a clue at last. Mrs. Peel picked up a wisp of handkerchief from the floor. A lady's handkerchief and beautifully perfumed. Hmm. Well, that's your territory, Mrs. Peel. Think you can identify it? Of course. It's reckless abandon. Sounds highly appropriate. Who makes it? A company called Bell Chamber Brothers. Well, that's your next call then, Mrs. Peel. <laughs> Chamber brought Perfumier's Extraordinary was so exclusive, Mrs. Peel had to positively hunt out their premises. The shop was old-fashioned, but tastefully decorated. Mrs. Peel entered. 
and made her way between the bowls of roses and lavender water, not noticing the tall blonde who was inspecting some scent in a display cabinet. An immaculately groomed, languid young man glided forward. Oh, madam, and what can I do for you? I'd like to speak to Mr. Bellchamber. Oh, that's my brother. He's away in Provence at the moment, crushing Lily. Really? I'm surprised he doesn't object. <laughs> I was about to say crushing lilies for Lily of the Valley, madam. James always pops over at this time of year. But if he's your brother, why isn't your name Bellchamber? Oh, but it is, madam. Oh, but then how did you know I didn't want to speak to you? Nobody ever does, madam. I've got no personality, you see. None at all? Not one iota. My brother says that as a salesman, I'm a total disaster. When he's here, he shuts me up in the back of the shop like Cinderella. Really? Well, you know how she ended up, don't you? How? She lived happily ever after. After what? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I see what you mean. Thank you very much for the encouragement. And how can I be of service? Well, you can tell me something. Certainly. It's reckless abandon. Is it a popular line? With the discerning and the wealthy, it's priced a little high for most pockets. So the number of clients who use it would be, um... Ten, fifteen, twenty at the most. Mm-hmm. Could you give me a list of their names? Oh, well, that's a little irregular, madam. Ah, but you see, I'm writing an article on perfumes of the aristocracy. I take it you wouldn't be adverse to a little publicity. Oh, as long as it's discreet, madam. Very well. Please take a seat. Bell Chamber disappeared. Mrs. Peel settled down to wait watched by the tall blonde, who was Martha, the charlady. Here we are, madam. As far as I can tell from our records, this is a complete list. I'm very grateful. Um, perhaps you'd care to put your gratitude into more tangible form, madam? These shelves hold our latest range. What? Oh, yes, certainly. Uh, here's my card. Send me a case of Lily of the Valley, distilled by your brother, of course. Ah, yes, madam, of course, Thank you very much. Mrs. Peel left the shop. Martha moved forward, swiftly picked up Mrs. Peel's card and hurried out. Just a minute, madam. You've forgotten your bottle of... Oh, reckless abandon. Down in the street, Martha rushed through the traffic to a parked sports car, opening the door and flinging herself into it alongside the driver. Get after that girl, the one over there. Why? Why, for heaven's sake, Martha? There's a list with my name on it. That's thin, Mama. Yes, but I've got her address. Then don't worry, my darling. I'll phone Freeman. He'll handle it for us. Don't worry. He never fails. While Mrs. Peel was tracing one cent, John Steed was following up on clues of the Ministry of Missile Redeployment, interviewing Sir Rodney's second-in-command, Horatio Tate. A woman... You say that Sir Rodney was killed by a woman? It looks like it, Mr. Tate. Did you ever see him with one? Never. He avoided them like the plague. I can't say I blame him, Brady. It's Rodney creatures, women. Never understand what makes them tick. And Sir Rodney felt the same way? They were anathema, Steed. Sheer anathema. Mentioned women's lib and he'd go purple in the face. Perhaps he was having an unhappy love affair. Oh, impossible. There's no room for that kind of thing in our line of country. We lead a very monastic life here, you understand. We can't allow ourselves to be distracted by memory. Uh, Here's the Mr. Tite, the commission's report. If you just put it against your name when you've read it and pass it on to the next on the Oh, uh, yes, uh, put it on the desk. Please. All right, thank you. Uh, you were saying? Uh, yeah, I was saying that uh, what you're suggesting is out of the question, Steed. If Sir Rodney had been carrying on, as they say, I, I would certainly have known about it. I see. Well, then I'm sorry to have wasted your time. Not at all. Glad to uh, scotch the rumor before it spreads. Mm. De mortuis nil nisi bonum. But, uh, yes, quite exactly. Steed left, Tate frowned. De mortuis nil nisi. Oh, well. In a nearby office, Roxby, a fellow worker, picked up his phone. Roxby. Roxby. Look, I've just had a fellow in my office suggesting that Sir Rodney was playing about with some woman uh, here in the office, and she killed him. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, goodness gracious, whatever next? Well, the chaps in the club will have a good laugh about that. 
And uh, his officers there, well, miracles never cease. But uh, pigs will fly before we see any of that sort of thing in this department. <laughs> Roxby was still chuckling as he replaced the telephone and turned to gaze affectionately at the woman next to him. It was Martha, back in her charlie de gear. Darling. I've got to go now, darling. Oh, so soon, my puppet. Oh, I can't hang around here all day. I've got work to do. Uh, <laughs> oh, when shall I see you again? Oh, my, uh, um, mm, when you've got something to tell me. Oh, well, my heart is filled with things to tell you, my treasure. Not those sort of things. I mean, important things. The things I ask you to find out for me. And you promise. Oh, I know, and I know. I keep my promise. Oh, but how will I find you, darling? You won't have to battle. I'll find you. <laughs> Bye now. With that, Martha picked up her skirt and her bucket and left. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, in her apartment, having studied the list she'd obtained from Bell Chamber Broth, was consulting Mother on the telephone. I want to eliminate some of the names on the list first, Mother. Tell me about Lady Vanessa Cholmodley Davenport. Nothing to tell about her except she's dead. Had a drink last Tuesday. Oh. Mrs. Maud Kingsley Ravenshoe. Forget her. Never since she came out in 38. The Honorable Malvina Harcourt Smith. Cross her out. She's a platoon commander and a girl guide. Remember that ghastly scandal when she pitched up a car with three brownies? Oh. Well, the Duchess of... Oh, hold on, Mother. There's someone at the front door. Mrs. Peel, still holding the list, put down the phone and went to the front door. A man stood in the doorway, a snub-nosed gun pointing straight at her. The list. That's what I've come for. Yeah, that perfume list. Smells of danger to me, Mrs. Peel. comes a new way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. New fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for Keeps toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for Cold water Omo gives you the superb cleanness you want from a washing powder. Listen to Mrs. Baxter of Claremont. It really is good. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that, that it could be so good. You Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Hello, Mr. Peel. Hello, Mr. Steed. Hello, Mr. Peel. Hello, Mr. Steed. Hello, Mr. Steed. Hello, Mr. Steed.